today we're going to run through some concepts on vehicles and it's going to be um, pretty easy, pretty fun. We're going to break it down. Um, this stuff is going to be applicable to basically any kind of vehicle that you're going to draw. You're going to use the same techniques for everything. Let's start with the blue for our underdrawing. So what we're going to do is we're going to break down into the three components of, of more or less any vehicle. The, f the first thing you want to do is get a box around the overall shape of the vehicle. So if the vehicle is going to go somewhere inside here and there's all these negative spaces, right? This is going to be your first step is to just create a box that hits the outside of the vehicle and gives you something to start with to break everything down. And if you want to, you can carefully measure out the proportions. You can just estimate. I think estimating is always good because that helps develop your, your eye. The next thing that you're going to do is divide up into the parts of a car. Basically, there's three parts. There's the, the engine compartment, the cab, and the trunk. And that goes for any car. So here we're going to use a classic car, and that proportion is, is distinctly different. Um, roughly, the, the uh, first half of the car that is going to be on the left in this case is going to be the engine. Um, and the back little sliver, really, is going to be for the trunk, so the cab is, um, in this case, um, fairly small relative to the whole size of the car. So you got the engine, cab, trunk. And by changing the proportion of these three, you know, sliding them left and right, changing the height, um, you're going to basically be able to run through the entirety of car production and truck production. You can kind of subdivide it and find some alignments, right? So I would say probably about a third of the way down, if we break this into thirds, you can always estimate your thirds and halves and, every and everything. Um, you can get technical if you want, but I think it's also good practice to not be technical. So that's going to be about the top of the um, top of the engine compartment where the hood is. Then about a third of the way down, um, or a little bit below third, is probably going to be the actual bottom of the car. So the actual car is going to fit, like the main body of the car is going to fit right in here. Um, the other th the other thing to keep in mind is um, you know this this is a classic Art Deco kind of car, so there's a lot of curves. But when we're judging proportions, I think it's valuable to use straight lines. And we can go from there. We can start to block in the cab in this compartment. And we can start just cutting off these curves with like 45 degree angles. Maybe about, you know, right here is where the actual um, engine compartment ends right here. And uh, then we're going to have our wheels kind of box out towards the, the front of the car. And maybe they'll be about this big. And we got wheels on the back too. We can run that line all the way across. Boom. And we can then subdivide wheels from there. So here we have something that actually, um, even though this is just very sketchy, already looks looks relatively carish, right? We have basically our big forms, which is our large proportions, large subdivisions. We got uh, medium forms and small forms. The small forms are, are what really distinguish everything. The overall shape is what makes it immediately recognizable. The medium shapes make it look um, distinctive as a particular type of car. And then the small shapes are what kind of sell you on the on the car itself. So here we can start um, defining things like the wheel well. The wheel well goes forward and comes all the way back back here. And it's kind of goes 
this way and down. And remember, we're using straight lines to define the wheel well. And then we're going to come back later and we're going to um, curve everything. So we can start to start to curve out the wheels just to remind us that they're wheels. And at this stage, they don't have to be perfect circles. They just have to be vaguely circular. Um, we can subdivide this part and find the actual door. And we can go from there and continue to subdivide. We can slightly change the angle of the front here because it's not perfectly flat. Um, then we can make sure that we get things like the tire on the back and so on. So here we're getting um, getting pretty distinctive, right? Like smaller shapes, you've got basically triangular lights here. Um, you've got your bumper on the front. And your um, wheel wells stick out back here, right? Got your bumper on the back. back bumper probably should go up a little bit. The front bumper is a little low and I, th and I think it lines up directly here with the center of the tire. So we can erase that a little bit. Cool. And you know I forgot to mention too that you know, I'm doing this digitally but this really can be done in any sort of um, any sort of media. It doesn't matter. It can be pen, pencil, whatever. So here I'm going to start arcing things out and making them uh, have just a slight curve here. I'm going to transition here. This has a nice, really cool, elegant curve to it. Curves all the way back and probably curves back around here. Right? as it comes down. And the trunk here definitely has a nice curve to it. It's real rounded. The wheel wells round out. And on the back here they actually kind of flare. Then here, you've got rounding kind of in all directions. You've got the window rounds back here. And it goes perfectly straight. Perfectly straight to divide the window. It does not have side view mirrors. It's important to notice, right? Um, then here, we'll go down to this. This curve is important to nail because this is the distinctive curve, the one that goes from the wheel well all the way down back here. So this is a big curve. So it may take several shots to kind of get the curve that you want. And you can always come back and clean it up and erase it later. I do that all the time. So one of the one of the things you can do is do something like that and then cut into what you've done with an eraser. If you're using pen, the trick is to just draw real softly and to do all the prep work, right? If you're using pencil, you have the advantage of having an eraser, right? So it curves slightly, goes basically flat, but not quite flat, over and down. And then you have your frame under here, which is just boring and straight, right? Then you're coming into your wheel. And you can subdivide your wheel a couple of times just to start giving this wheel some character. Because this has proportional divisions within itself too. Right, then we go in, start to arc out everything. Give the frame a connection, come in got these curvy triangles here and oddly you've got a another little mini like 
fog light kind of guy here. It's kind of cool. All right, then you've got your tire on the back. And on cars like this, I would um, I would not use straight line, right? I would use arc for almost everything. Um, that way, that you get some character and you get some contrast, right? This has kind of a funky bumper. It has these little things that stick out. Um, and then the, the paint job is, is important, right? So on the top of the hood, um, you can subdivide here. And here we're, we're ratcheting into small frames, right? Or small shapes. So you get that curve on the hood, and then the paint job comes out this way, goes into the door, curves to the back, sketches out, runs along the wheel well, and comes back, and basically runs this way. Now here I'm kind of sticking close to this car, but what's nice about um, drawing is that we remove the reference, and then all that's left is your drawing. So you don't have to stick super close to the reference. What the end goal is, is to get a good drawing. So here I can turn off all of my grid lines and then that's going to help me because um, some of my construction lines get distracting as I move away from them, right? And so as I pr proceed to clean this up, I need to remove those so that I can judge how elegant my arcs are and all that stuff. And remember, this is just a sketch, right? Right now I'm not going for like finished product. I am studying this car and studying this method. And it doesn't matter really how it turns out as long as I follow this sort of procedure. And that's really what I'm always after. It's like, did I follow the procedure well? If I followed the procedure well, I consider that a, a success um, regardless of how the actual drawing turns out. I think it's important to have some kind of mental trickery that you use to convince yourself that you're doing okay, even if you turn out a drawing you're not super happy with, right? You know, let people that are, when you're learning, you know, don't worry so much. Let the, let the pros wor worry about the quality of their pieces, right? Um, let people that are getting paid and their jobs on the line worry about whether their drawing is good or not. So try not to be super judgmental about your work, right? Um, then what we can do is we can add distinctive details, right? Like I left off this, the, you know, where the door panel exactly is. So I can add in the door panel. I can add in a door handle. I can add in um, the details of these um, air intake vents over here. just kind of hint at them. I can hint at further subdivisions under here. I can hint at, um, you know, areas where there's going to be some kind of hood ornament. Um, I can further subdivide wheels. Add in textures there. run that loosely. Then as a bonus, um, what I can do is um, get in some get in with some value there, right? In digital realms, I like to lasso and bucket fill just to get the big shapes because it turns out really clean. Then when I deselect, everything kind of turns out nicely. I can just go ahead and make the tires dark because they're dark. Then I can lasso out the wheel itself and delete that. So lasso, better lasso, bucket, lasso, and delete.
one of the things about drawing like a dark car is that you don't want to use black. Um, your absolute will kind of kill any depth that you that you've created. Um, so you want to stick away from that um, as you go along and use your darks to emphasize kind of the form of the car, right? So here there's a there's a long shape that I can get in there and um, bucket fill that, and that emphasizes the form, right? So then I can do another long shape around here. Oops, don't like that because I intersected. Come all the way around, boom. Do a long shape around that. Bucket fill that. I can see this form starting to emerge, right? Then I can snag um, this bit right here. Bucket fill that with some darks. I can snag just a little bit along here. Start to make these lines go around and be kind of cool and elegant. Bucket fill there. I can bucket fill this whole tire. Right? I can bucket fill bits of this area because they're going to be dark. There's a real danger here of doing too much, right? Um, and that's a that's a big deal. Then what I can do is I can um, switch to some highlights, right? So my background is kind of a 10% a gray, and um, what I can do is go completely um, to the other other direction and do some some bright highlights like I've got a bright highlight here right I got a bright highlight on here that I could do I've got like little bits of bright highlight in the black here and I can just kind of be real loose with these highlights too and I can snag on here right to get a couple up here. I could probably snag a couple in the in the tires too or in the wheels. Boom. And you're gonna do this just with a with a pencil too. I think we'll go in with like, uh, we'll try a 50% gray for just all the parts that are black on here and, and see how this turns out. So um, I should be able to lasso basically like this whole area where there's going to be darks. Go up and around. There we go. Let's bucket fill that and see what that looks like. Cool. Now I need to take out the windows. Delete that. Cool. And I've got basically, more or less right now, I have a, a full um, like value breakdown. And I can get into some more details, right? I can do this sort of thing and switch to like a 30%. Um, That'll probably work better. Yeah, there we go. For the uh, for the chrome bits. Um. Chrome bumpers. There we go. And more or less now I have have a complete like side uh, value sketch done. I think these side studies are very important though because this is going to help you um, just kind of get the proportions down and you know this is the big sh the big struggle for a lot of people is just going how do you go from this shape into this kind of finished car and essentially we've got several levels of tricks that we're doing and then at the end we're kind of hiding the trick with polish and finish um, and you know, I want to show you the trick. I want to be sure that you know how to divide into engine cab trunk, subdivide your proportions, kind of block everything out with angles, and then add in your elegant curves 
and block in some value. Um, so that's it for now. We're gonna sh we're gonna do more with this drawing in a separate video because we're getting over time.